you're looking at one of the biggest moving objects ever made. The Mary Maersk is a triple E-class cargo ship. Those E's stand for economy of scale, environmentally improved and energy efficient, which is actually four E's. So if we're not counting, I'll give them another one. Enormous. Nobody builds something this big, this complex, this expensive for bragging rights. That's what it's all about. I'm 200 feet above the water and all I can see of the ship are containers. Put them all on a train at once and it would stretch a staggering 70 miles long. The ship currently weighs over 250,000 tonnes, but only about 63,000 of them are actual ship. And I'm not just talking about the containers you can see, there are even more in the hold. The Mary Maersk carries its shipping containers stacked in columns, 23 across its width and 24 along its length. And because there's no deck, the containers can be piled up to 21 high. Right now, Joe is going to show me one empty section on board that'll be filled at the next stop in Rotterdam. <sighs> Joe, I don't think much of your stairs. Oh, my... God, that is a huge... That'll be filled with cargo eventually. In the next port, we're going to go fully loaded. That's oh. the belly of the ship. That's huge. <sighs> yeah, you're obviously used to steep stairs. Ah! So this is a hold. This is what the whole ship's about. In this cathedral-like space, we're actually more than 10 metres below sea level. This is an enormous building. And this is not the whole hold, is it? It's not all of it. No. And hang on, this isn't even full height, is it? Because I go up above... Double it. Oh, so double this in every direction. Basically, yeah. That direction, that direction, mm -hmm. and that, and you've mm -hmm. got one of 11 holds. Mm -hmm. It's... I honestly think my brain is struggling to get hold of how big it is. Fully loaded, this ship carries a whopping 18,000 containers. If they were placed end to end, they would reach all the way into space. It's kind of spooky. It is kind of spooky, and it can get spooky when you're sailing because of the wind and the waves. You get these noises that are unexplained, and a lot of the crew are superstitious. Oh, that's it's proper scary. maritime stuff. Yeah. So there's, there's a sort of a sense of it being a bit haunted and a bit... Yeah, yeah. I totally get that. Ugh. I would not like to be left here on my own with a torch with slightly fading batteries. By doing away with a deck and piling its containers high, the Mary Maersk is able to carry over 200,000 tonnes of cargo. But how can something that looks like it has the structural integrity of a giant bathtub be strong enough to survive the cyclones of the South China Seas? I've come to the ship's kitchen, whatever, to demonstrate something absolutely critical to ships like this, and I need this sandwich box. So, imagine this is a ship. That's its deck on top. It's pretty rigid, but for container ships like this, you can't have that deck. They need to put containers in there, so... Here's one I prepared earlier, as this is now a food show. And as you can see, with no lid, it's all flexible. But when I say prepared earlier, I really did, because what I cut off was this bit. If we take the lid off our sandwich box, don't need that. With this bit on top, the rim, if you like, it's a lot more solid. It's a lot less flexible than without. And this bit here, it's called a torsion box. A torsion box is a reinforced rim just like the rim on a bucket, a cardboard cup, or a sandwich box. Its purpose is to stop the ship from flexing. And on the Mary Maersk, it's so big, it doubles up as corridors that run along the length of the hull. Now that's simple science used in a big way. Massive container ships like the Mary Maersk carry 90% of all global trade. That means almost everything we buy has been on a ship like this. So is this as big as a container ship will ever get? To find out, I'm going to build one of my own. 
And as this is a Danish ship, I've lured in some of the crew to help me with the promise of Denmark's finest export. Cool, crisp Lego. We don't need that. We don't need that. I suggest we do have the instructions. Should we start opening bags and see what we've got? My model ship came with the useful accessory. The man who built the actual ship. Naval architect Christian Agadra. You better be good at this, by the way. But given that you build them for real... Right, I'll call out for the bits. You can pass them and you can assemble it. You be the designer. Yeah, I'll, I'll, the bits. I'll take the drawings. You be the suppliers, you give me the bits, and I'll be the builder. So you're the shipyard? Well, the way I designed this, then you need to have a rectangular... So please follow the drawing. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Trust the drawing. Trust OK, the you rushed me through it because yeah, I couldn't hear... Well, we'll have to go back. Yeah, if we go back... No, that's supposed to be like that. I think that went well. And the actual crew have, rightly so, gone off to do their jobs on the real thing, but we haven't now finished our model. This ship came along and it was a game-changer. Is this as far as we're going to go? Are we as now as big as ships can be? Because it in increases on this are sort of incremental, aren't they? People put another few feet on the end, we've got a bigger one for about a week, and then somebody else does. And when are we next going to see the next change on this level, when suddenly it's this big? You could add in the length on the beam, add one more row, at one more bay, but the biggest problem is the external boundaries. This ship would have to enter ports and go through canals, and if they are not big enough, it will be difficult to maneuver this ship in and out of the port. So until the world gets bigger, there's not much point in making container ships like this much bigger anyway, because you can't use it. For now, at least, it seems this is about as big as ships can get, which is pretty big.